Hello, and welcome to the unpacking video on the critical lens of feminism. Jumping straight into the content, the first concept contained within the critical lens of feminism as it applies to English literature studies is the concept of women's exclusion slash disenfranchisement. Uh, a lot of times in, um, in literature, in books, video, uh, books, films, video games, uh, women just are totally absent. Uh, sometimes when women are included in these uh, texts, they are not as fleshed out and detailed as the male characters are. So they can be um, physically absent from these texts, and that can be something to notice, and you can critique the detail and uh, screen time that these characters have amount of dialogue these characters have and the amount of uh, influence those characters have uh, on the story. And the other um, side of this is the disenfranchisement, so the uh, reduction of their privileges and rights. Uh, considering the historical basis of feminism, that we have come quite a long way, we still have a ways to go, uh, but this is about them not being able to contribute to um, it could be the workplace in this text. It could be um, the grand adventure. They might be um, relegated to a position of um, being in the home. That is quite a common uh, uh, a place that women are relegated to when you are looking through a critical lens. Uh, many of the times that is done implicitly through this exclusion, and sometimes it's even done explicitly. Uh, and that's when uh, I, I think those texts have already been um, quite rightfully um, critiqued to obliteration. The second concept is the divide between sex and gender and that instability uh, when it comes to any depth of uh, consideration. Uh, this, I would say, is a slightly newer idea. Um, from uh, feminism's early days, uh, there was a lot more comfort in the binary of man and woman. And this binary is being uh, broken down uh, quite, quite quickly uh, in this day and age. Uh, so this idea of sex and gender instability is the idea that there aren't specific actions or there aren't specific uh, even colors, there aren't specific dress codes, there aren't specific words that make a person more of a man or more of a woman. So uh, a, a, an example I always think of is ballet. Uh, dancing is, is traditionally considered something that is more feminine, but when you look at ma male ballet dancers, they really are the, the height of masculinity. The way that they perform in those roles traditionally uh, is as a masculine person. A uh, person? Yeah. We'll le leave it loosely as that. And even more so in uh, contemporary ballet, there's even more of a breakdown there uh, with, uh, I guess, female dancers then taking on the masculine role and playing around with uh, that divide. So even in the, the most traditional roles, we have a breakdown. Sports is another um, traditionally hyper-masculine domain, but as a society, we're becoming more and more accepting of, um, uh, I, I suppose, inclusion of all in those domains. And the last one is wave theory. Uh, wave theory is applying to feminism, and wave theory is the idea that there are certain milestones that feminism has met before it's moved on to the next wave. There have been, uh, in, according to wave theory, there have been four waves of feminism, uh, each trying to achieve different goals and using different methods to achieve those goals. The language used in uh, a feminist critical lens would be patriarchy. Uh, that's the idea that a um, culture or a society is dominated by men or uh, 
headed by a man. The opposite is a matriarchy. And this can also apply to biology, but mostly what we are using is just the term patriarchy to mean broadly the idea that men have uh, more of a privilege or more advantage over women. The next uh, term is agency. Agency here means the ability to act out your own desires. <clears throat> next term, performivity. That links to our idea of sex gender instability. So you, some acts you can perform that might be more um, gendered towards one side, the other, or if you are getting into queer theory, you would say that there are additional dimensions. It's not simply a binary scale of male to female. There are other things going on. So performivity is the idea that uh, you aren't locked in as being masculine or being feminine. There's an array of different things that are performed to different degrees throughout uh, a person's whole life. Next concept or term is the male gaze. That is the idea that much of literature is presented through the perspective of what a male, uh, male viewer would be looking for. This one is particularly notable uh, when considering film. And the last term is privilege, uh, and that means it's general uh, means its general meaning uh, that there is an advantage an advantage given to something. The seminal contributors to feminism, uh, I have chosen, I guess, a chronological advancement. One of the very early feminists, Mary Wollstonecraft, moving to a. Uh, from where we are now in history, a middle feminist, Simone de Beauvoir. And the most recent on this list, and my personal favourite, is Judith Butler. Judith Butler, it does lean towards queer studies, which I would say is a subdomain of feminism. Uh, but I still think that's uh, interesting to think about that feminism has uh, now branched out to have subdomains. Now, moving this back out of the abstract, out of the conceptual, and moving this to our application, my sample thesis here is applying a feminist lens to Jane Eyre illuminates the oppressive patriarchal valuation of women's functionality as objects. Sounds a little bit wordy, but uh, here we have patriarchy, so here is our idea that men are oppressing women, or I suppose um, masculinity is advantaged over femininity, um, and valuation of women's functionality means women are considered for what they can do, and the thing they can do uh, according to this uh, evaluation is act as objects, act as trophies. Uh, and if you have read Jane Eyre, you will see that one character is locked away as a trophy or maybe as the opposite of a trophy because her value has expired. And interesting things you would go into there, interesting examples uh, you would uh, retrieve from the text to prove that. Lots of ideas going on here. Some of these ideas you'll already be familiar with. Some of these will be totally foreign. Uh, I hope this has shed some extra light on how you can apply uh, feminism as a critical lens to your own studies in English. Thanks.